Lego Star Wars 2020 Advent Calendar. Here is the beautiful box artwork on top of my storytelling stovetop. A stovetop that is no longer functioning properly. Whirlpool, when are you going to get back to me to fix this? Welcome marketing chefs. I've got something truly special cooking in our omni-channel oven today. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. Lego Star Wars 2020 Advent Calendar. Jingle all the way. Up next in the marketing kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, the marketing kitchen. Hi, I'm Ron Vining, your host of Marketing Kitchen TV. Please subscribe, like, and share our channel. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you the 2020 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar, as well as give you a recap of the 2019 Lego Employee Gift Xmas Wing, talk to you about and share with you all of the exclusive Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar Christmas minifigures inside of the Lego ornaments, and of course, highlight the exclusive Lego Star Wars Christmas print and Christmas builds from the 2020 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. Are you excited? I certainly am. Here I am donning a green shirt in honor of Christmas at one of my favorite local Lego shops called Secret Chamber where they have old and new sets for offer. Here is the beautiful box art for this year's 2020 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. Don't expect anything less from Lego, just really great art all the time. And here she can be found on our storytelling stovetop. As I mentioned, a stovetop that's not working properly. Still waiting on Whirlpool to do something about that. I'm really excited to unbox and review this exclusive Darth Vader print. Are you ready? Let's shift things around a bit and I'll share with you the unboxing and review of this year's calendar. Hey, welcome to the Marketing Kitchen. I thought I would share this video with you from a different perspective. Normally, the camera is situated over here. Sometimes we have the camera here, and once in a while I film going in this direction from my MacBook, uh, from the iSight camera. Today I thought I would have the camera shining over into what is the studio aspect of the Marketing Kitchen, but then also over here onto our storytelling stovetop because today's story is the 2020 Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar. I'm really excited that Thanksgiving and Christmas 2020 are almost upon us. Well, they're about three, four months away at the time that I'm filming this video. But with all that's happened in 2020, I think that the holiday season is really the time for us to come together again. And regardless of what restrictions there may be or what governments might say or whatever, lockdowns, like, hey, listen, they told us we couldn't celebrate Easter. They, they forbid us from going to church. And when I say they, it's whoever the government is in whatever country you lived in. And you know what I have to say to that? That's absolute nonsense. So if something like that were to happen later on this year, I say F that. You go and you enjoy your Christmas with your family and friends. You enjoy Thanksgiving with your family and friends. Because I'm done with this. Uh, the science just doesn't support it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you, those of you that are out there living in fear and not enjoying your, your, yourself not enjoying your life, not enjoying time with your families, not going to work, not going to school, not uh, going to church, just not living. The science doesn't support isolation. It just doesn't. The numbers just don't add up. The wearing of masks are nonsense. It's nonsense. There's no scientific data to back up that a mask protects you from a virus. And it's not about that, that whole story of it's not about protecting you, it's about protecting me. Guess what? The mask doesn't help either of you. And even if you're both wearing them, it's nonsense. So done, over, distancing, nonsense. Gathering together in groups, nonsense. For the, the, uh, for the rest of 2020, I encourage you to live life as you lived it before. There's no reason, no reason whatsoever to change the way you live your life. 
and I'm serious about that. And as we enter the holiday season, I encourage you to just do what is right for you and your family in terms of getting together with your family and your friends to celebrate these important holidays. Thanksgiving for an American. I, it's my favorite holiday. There's no expectation of exchanging gifts. It's just about time to get together and, and, and celebrate and love and enjoy each other. So do that. And Christmas, the real meaning of the holiday has been pretty much erased. But for me, anyway, it's the birth of my Savior. So that's what I'll be celebrating. But at the same time, I go along with the pagan aspect of the tradition. We have the Christmas tree, we exchange gifts, we celebrate, but we should also honor the reason for the season. There's a striper song called uh, Reason for the Season. You should check that out. Okay, anyway, long tangent there to get us started. But why are we here today? We're here today to talk about the Lego Star Wars 2020 Advent Calendar. And to accompany us on this journey, Actually, I was just looking at, before I got started, the 2019 Advent Calendar video that I put together. And so if you're interested in checking that out, you can check that out in the link above. Uh, later on that same year, I recorded a great video for what is right here and to accompany us on this journey talking about uh, the 2020 calendar, the 2019 employee gift uh, that LEGO gave to, to their employees. It is called the Xmas Wing. And it is one of the, uh, I guess, pride of my collection. I'm not a Lego employee, but I was able to get this on the aftermarket, and it's just a fantastic build. And so if you're not familiar with the 2019 Lego Xmas Wing, you can check that video out. I've done three different videos on that up uh, in the comment section below. Before we get to the unboxing and review of this year's calendar, I just have these uh, ornaments out. And you'll see, and I've done another video, and I guess we'll do the uh, plug for one more. But I've done a video right here where I talk about all my LEGO Star Wars minifigures, and there I give an in-depth uh, review, or overview, I guess, rather, of all of the uh, exclusive figures that have come in the Advent calendars going back to 2011. And here we have the first one, so this was from 2011, it's Yoda. And because we have a Christmas Darth Vader in this one, I thought I would feature the Christmas Darth Vader from a uh, Advent calendar Christmas past. And then over in there, uh, the, the final one over there, those are the figures that came in the LEGO Xmas wing. So we have a Resistance Xmas pilot. Uh, we have a, also a, an alternate uh, Santa Yoda, different from the one that came in the original uh, calendar. What I've done, by the way, if you're, so this is what I do. Every year I buy the um, ornaments that LEGO puts out. And um, <coughs> even though their Christmas builds are nice, I put them aside and I usually uh, just park those out but I use them to house both the exclusive minifigures found in the Christmas sets, all the Christmas-oriented ones anyway, and then also the builds. So for example, here we have a speeder. So this would be a speeder bike like the one from Indoor. So I have Yoda on there. So I just try to find a way to do that. And then of course, yeah, I put those on my Christmas tree. Speaking of Christmas tree, this was last year's uh, premium with purchase. Always want to save a few items in, and so don't, whenever, before, I used to rush out and buy every LEGO set as soon as they came out, and I've stopped doing that because what happens is, is that then I have no more sets to buy for the rest of the year. And then things like this amazing uh, premium with purchase come out, and if I've bought all the LEGO Star Wars sets or Disney sets for that particular year, then I have nothing else to buy, and then I can't take advantage of premium with purchase. So yeah, that's just a LEGO tip that I have that I typically... Um, I, I've been holding back on my purchases now just for that very purpose so that I can save some room in my cart for some uh, great treat, tweets. <laughs> tweets. Treats. Uh, speaking of uh, 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 treats, I've done a couple of videos so far this year for the uh, 2020 range and I did one for the 501st Legion Battle Pack, which is right there. And I've also done one for the ATT, which features Ahsoka Tano and Ahsoka Tano's Clone Trooper. And that can be found up above. I've been really busy doing a couple of things. Um, I've got an app, well, sorry. I've got a website coming out called AppFlix, and you can check that out here if you're interested. And AppFlix is a streaming entertainment guide, and we've been working on that uh, fast and furiously. And it's about all things streaming entertainment. So hopefully that'll be out by Christmas of this year. That'll be my Christmas present to myself to get that done a year later. So I haven't been able to build all the sets that, that, I've, that I've bought. But I'm excited there's a few sets that I still don't have yet. I have uh, purchased from Target the new Bespin dual set, the 40th anniversary 
for um, The Empire Strikes Back, so I'm really excited. I didn't get, wasn't able to get it on LEGO's website, but I was able to pick it up on Target uh, as a red card VIP member. And there's another set I wasn't able to get yet because uh, I just haven't had a chance, and that's the, um, the Death Star Duel. But I'll be, I'll be saving that one for getting whatever the premium is for this year for that. And I also am excited about the new Moss Eisley Cantina Master Builder set, right? How cool is that? Okay, anyway, there's my long monologue for you before we get started. But there's a lot of things that'll be under the Christmas tree this year related to LEGO Star Wars 2020. Let us now take a look at the advent calendar. I'm really excited about it. I love these sets. Now, filming on this side of the kitchen, it's a bit awkward for me. I haven't done it before, so if I'm doing some crazy things, you just bear with me. So I think what I'll do is throughout the video, I'll just come and I'll move things a little bit closer to the screen. So really, just how cool is this build? Or is this box, rather, that we're about to start to build from? I just love these. I've been collecting them since the very first one, back in 2011, and here we are in 2020. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can open this box up, depending on what you want to do with it. And you can take a peek, a sneak peek right in here by going to the side. But if you cut it this, uh, sorry, if you cut it this way, what'll happen is, is that this flap will come down and then you'll be able to see this display. The other thing is when you cut the tabs here, what happens is this goes up and then that becomes the window where the characters are that you can then uh, pop out for the calendar, right? I think that's how it goes anyhow. Or did I, I think everybody always messes this up every year. Okay, yeah, this is the, this is the one you don't want to open up, folks. You actually want to just open up this side, okay? And that's if you want that to fold out. And I want that to fold out. I forget every year. All right, be careful with knives. Okay, opening that up right here. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, they only have tape on one side this year. Oh, well, sorry, they only hit. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. How about doing some pre-production work, Ron? That's it. Dun, dun. Why don't I put that killer knife down first, right? Are we ready? Are we ready to see what happens here? Bum, 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 bum. Whoa! There it is. There is the Millennium Falcon. And there are our, our hero and heroine from the Rise of Skywalker, uh, or the Force Awakens trilogy from Disney. And then there is Darth Vader. All right, this is really cool. This is a fun scene. I enjoy these. They've used different ones every year, different backdrops. Uh, one thing that I would... Um, that I'm a bit disappointed in, and this goes back to when Kenner, with the original Kenner Star Wars Death Star, was that they actually had a, a Stormtrooper and then they had like a Death Star Commander in the background on the cardboard. And for me anyway, for displayability or for play, since this set comes with a, Dar a poor Darth Vader, uh, Poe and Rey, why are they here? Because then if you put them out on the display there, then right, they're, they're, they don't have duplicates, do they? Uh, I wish there, there was a, a, star, uh, a mirror universe in Star Wars, uh, like the world between worlds, so that I could rewrite the story. But okay, anyway, that, that being said, that would be one thing I would change. Otherwise, this is quite nice. Now, if you're not familiar with the advent calendar concept that's here, you'll see that there are individual day and dates that are, are present. And what happens is, is that you push these in, and then when you push them in on each day, counting down to Christmas, right, starting from so you, you would start with day one. So you do this 24 days before Christmas Eve, and you just push the that in. You pull out the, the gift in there. There'll be instructions on the back side showing you how to build the set, and then the, you count down to Christmas Eve. It's quite fun. I, we used to have advent calendars when I was a kid. My mom would have ones with candy, or there would be ones with little gifts in it. I know that if I were a six, eight, ten-year-old boy, I would absolutely love this. Or girl, because of course, um, girls love Star Wars too. Uh, and women. Uh, yeah, it just it, this would just be so much fun. Whenever I'm playing with Lego, well, build, playing, building Lego Star Wars, I always think, how much would I enjoy this if I were that? Because I, I saw Star Wars in the movie theater when it first came out back in 1977. I collected all of those Kenner Star Wars action figures between 77 and about 84. And I think now that if I were that uh, age six to, uh, to 13, 14 year old boy, playing with the new, like the Master Builders Cloud City or the upcoming Moss Eisley Cantina or even doing these advent calendars. Wow, that would just be so awesome. So I really, I'm jealous for the children uh, today that they get these awesome toys to, to play with. And at the same time, uh, though I guess I'm fortunate as an adult that I get to play with them too, uh, but just not in the same way. Okay, all right, you're not here to have me tell my Christmas time story, even though we're on our storytelling stove top. 
Speaking of our storytelling stovetop, hey Whirlpool, Whirlpool, my range has stopped working properly and I've tweeted to you several times, I've only heard back after multiple tweets. I heard back from the UK and then I heard back from the US. The UK wants to help out, I'm, we're still talking so I'm not sure if they're going to, but the US doesn't care. And just, I, just as an aside by the way, the, and since it's Christmas time, let's talk about how the, the naughty list. I have been advertising your products for free in my kitchen for over a year and a half. And that's, that's a bonus to you. Now, if you're gonna get on my naughty list by not helping me repair this range, then there's a couple of different things that I can do. I can film the video and not be so nice uh, and, and treat you for being a brand that hasn't been responsive. Or I, you know, could give you praise. Uh, but also too, in this video, I wanna make an announcement to you all. I actually have purchased a home in the US. So I'm in Singapore right now, as most of you know. But I have purchased a home in, uh, in the US. And so in a few months time, I'll be flying back to the US to create an all new marketing kitchen. Now, we're not leaving this marketing kitchen, by the way, because I, I love Singapore and I will still be staying in Singapore. But I'm going to be splitting my time back and forth between the US and Singapore for the primary reason of the fact of what happened this past year. It really showed me that I can't be so far away from my family so that's in the US. So I will be creating an all new marketing kitchen and a home in the US. And I'll be needing to buy appliances for it because it's going to be, the, uh, the layout of the house is quite different than, than my home here in Singapore. So I haven't actually fully figured out how I'm gonna design it yet. But I'm going to need a range. And so I'm gonna need a new, another storytelling stovetop. I'm going to need another omni-channel oven. I'm going to need another um, um, hyper or hybrid, or if I, you know, we'll call this the, the hyper-connected uh, hood, all right? I'm gonna need a new one, and I'm gonna need those as my backdrop. Now, I could buy Whirlpool products again, or I could buy something else. Um, the refrigerator's there, uh, that's by Samsung. And by the way, talking about brands that are just really care and really good, Samsung, for example, when I had a problem with this uh, widescreen monitor right here, do you know what Samsung Singapore did for me? Samsung Singapore came out to my home, they checked this out, and they replaced this monitor for free. They gave me a brand new one. They just they brought a new one here, they helped me take this one down, helped me set that up. That's fantastic customer service. And that's what I'm expecting from you, Whirlpool. Whirlpool, I'm expecting you to come to the marketing kitchen and swap this out and just make it right. Not too much to ask. And if you do that for me, then I promise you my kitchen in the US will be 90% Whirlpool products. But if you don't, then certainly on the list here is going to be Samsung, who my refrigerator right over here that you see in the backdrop of all my videos, that's Samsung. And because Samsung did such a great job here with, for me, then I owe them that. But I, you know, I like to spread the wealth around a little bit. All right, anyway, I'm on so many tangents today. Why don't we just get started with this, with this video here, with this review. All right, you ready for me to open this baby up? I sure am, I'm excited. She's been sitting on here for a couple of days because uh, this thing barely works now. So uh, yeah, she's just been sitting here waiting for me to record this video. And let's just get started. Ready? I'm excited. Now, because I'm such a Lego nerd, I'm not gonna pop these open. So I'm going to do this the lazy way and I'm going to take the, the figures out from the box. So that, and this also, this way it won't spoil the surprise for, for all of you that um, potentially want to be surprised as to what day the different things are coming out, okay? Now what happens is, in these, they have these nice little egg crates right here. And these are great for sorting out parts. So the first wave of advent calendars, the first few years, these were in plastic. And you know, I understand about being environmentally friendly that it's better that they're in this probably recycled cardboard. But at the same time, I really enjoyed the plastic ones of these. So I'm excited that for the first five or six years or so of the advent calendars, I have plastic crates like this so I can sort out the parts. All right, and just so I'll give you a little sneak peek inside of the box here. As you can see, this is where they give the instructions about the, the different figures, right? So they're right in there. But because I don't want to damage this box, because I just like to save it, I don't, I don't save all of my Lego boxes, by the way, but I certainly, but I do save uh, 
the, the some of the special ones, right? Uh, like the UCS uh, Falcon, um, these have been calendar ones. I will be saving, for example, the Razor Crest uh, this year. And uh, yeah, that, oh, speaking of the way, that's another set. Yeah, I ordered that on lego.com. That's actually shipping to the US. For those of you that are new to my channel, half of my collection is here in Singapore. The other half of my collection is in the US, which is gonna be cool because I'll finally have a studio in the US and I will finally have a home in the US where they won't be in storage there. They'll actually be on display, similar to how they are here in the Singapore side of the marketing kitchen, okay? Okay, so let us now take the, the set here. Let's integrate it. Let's move the Christmas tree over for a second here. We'll put this set down. Add a tree there, put our gifts. I really love, I really love this build. Sometimes these premium and purchase builds are just fabulous. I have my hot mocha here. Oh, that's so good. Uh, my homebrew of, uh, of mocha. What I do is I buy the Starbucks instant packets. Uh, I put them in with probably about uh, one quarter. Uh, yeah, probably one, uh, two. Oh, that would be a half, wouldn't it? Anyway, I just go to the height of the spoon of hot water and I mix in the, uh, I, I mix that instant coffee there. And then I just use, uh, I lose a little bit of cocoa and then I use uh, chocolate milk and uh, put it in the microwave and it is a fantastic home mocha. All right. So inside of today's egg crate, we have all of the builds. Now I'm not gonna build them all for you right now because, I, because I'm shifting to the, the US I'm going to save a lot of things to build later, but I will build some of them uh, for you here today. But we're definitely gonna take a look at each and every single one of them. Are you excited to do that? I'm excited to do that. All right, let's, uh, I guess we'll just put this here for lack of a better spot. And let's see what we have. Now I'm not gonna go in order. I'm just gonna go in order with what's here in the box because I don't wanna ruin for you when you go through this yourself. All right, let's see what we have. We, there's a lot of minifigures this year and I'm quite excited about it. All right, the first one we have here, um, and again, in no particular, I'm just going in the order that they are in the box, which isn't the order there. This is Dio. And uh, Dio is from the Rise of Skywalker. And this is a Christmas version of Dio. One of the things that Lego tends to do is they, I wouldn't call it lazy, but uh, Lego lately has been in each of these advent calendars, been including things like the pork, which I had the pork right over here. Where did he go? Oh, actually, uh, they had did BB-8, and then they did a Christmas pork, trying to find where I put them out. Here it is. And the Christmas pork is actually from last year's advent calendar, and all they did was they just changed the color of his feathers and threw a Christmas hat on him. So there's nothing exclusive about that, really. And then they did the same thing with BB-8 in, in the year before that. So is that lazy? A little bit, but I guess it's cute. So now we're continuing with that with Dio. And I actually, I mean, I don't mind. I, I like variations of figures, but I really like exclusive prints better. And I knew I needed to have my scissors out. So let's just go over to this side of the kitchen for a second, get my scissors, and I'll share with you the build here of Dio. Should I sing some Christmas tunes for you at the same time? Beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Good thing I'm not gonna build all of these for you today. Otherwise you would be like, you'd be here for a hundred years. It would be Christmas 2021. You know what I really like? Uh, oh, by the way, uh, Lego is doing a holiday special this year on Disney Plus. So uh, uh, Lego, Disney, Lucasfilm have gotten together and they're going to do a Disney Plus uh, episode with, um, with these characters in, in there and they're calling it the holiday special. And that's a bit fun because when I was a kid back in 1977, uh, they had the, the holiday special, which George Lucas hated because really it wasn't, it was, the production value was pretty bad on that. Uh, and, uh, but it, had, it introduced us to Boba Fett, but there'll be a new holiday special this year. And it is going to uh, feature the, the Lego Star Wars characters in this advent calendar. So I'm excited for that. Okay, here is Christmas Dio. And Christmas Dio will be getting his very own, uh, maybe he'll be sharing it with somebody, but he will find his way into an ornament this year. And by the way, when I get to the US, I, I hope anyhow, 
I'll probably be spending Christmas 2020 for the very first time in the U.S. I have not spent a Christmas in the U.S. since 2008. Yeah, 2008 was the last Christmas that I, that I was in the U.S. So I'm excited uh, to be back there. And I'm not sure that I'll feature all these ornaments on my tree this year because I'll be renovating that home, uh, but certainly in 2021. All right, let's see, what's up next? The next one in the row here, and that is Ray. Oh no, sorry. Uh, it is Luke Skywalker. And this is a Tatooine uh, Luke Skywalker from A New Hope. And I have a ton of these. And so I think many of you do, but if this is your first time buying an advent calendar, then you'll be excited that you'll be getting a Luke if you, if, if you haven't bought other sets before. Just to let you know, when the uh, Skywalker Saga video game comes out, there's going to be a Luke Skywalker uh, exclusive poly bag, and he has blue milk on his face, and he has a, a, a blue milk container that he'll be holding, which is fun. And uh, so anyway, so we have a Luke. Let's pull out some of the other figures that are here too. We have a battle droid, and we've received a number of battle droids this year. This is a, um, if you're a Clone Wars fan, or you are a, um, a prequel fan, then you're excited about all the sets that have been coming out. There's been a lot of prequel love lately by Lego. But I'm not going to build that because I've got a ton of those. Now here's something that's exciting. This is a Sith Trooper. A Sith uh, Trooper for a First Order uh, in the... Well, it's a Sith Trooper, but it's in the variant of the First Order, which is a bit odd, right? Um, unless the Empire was behind, the Emperor was behind the First Order all along, which I guess he was, but in, I really try not to understand the Disney Star Wars trilogy at all. But anyhow, we have a Sith Trooper, and this is really cool. And for especially if you're army building and you want more of them, I actually bought two of the uh, Sith Trooper Battle Packs, so I, I have a, a fair share of these, not only from, uh, I believe one came with Kylo Ren's shuttle. I think so, I'm not, I'm not the second version of that, but I have the battle packs, so I, I probably won't be opening this one up just yet uh, this Christmas. Should I go through all the minifigures first? Sure, why not? And what's really interesting is that Luke Skywalker doesn't come with a lightsaber, but Rey does yeah, because she stole his lightsaber. And so, but all right, anyway, we have a, a, a Rey. So, yeah, anyway, so we have the Sith Trooper and we have another Ray. Okay, that's great. Let's see what else we have for excitement. Why don't we build a figure since I haven't built one in a little bit. We have right here, Christmas Poe Dameron. All right, let's check this out. This is really cute. I can't wait to show you this one. You've probably seen it in the videos already. See, Poe has two faces. Let's give him a more of a smiling face. But maybe he'd be really grumpy because he's wearing this wonderful Christmas sweater. Have you noticed that the hair pieces are becoming harder to put on? You have to really kind of put them at an angle. And let's see, does Poe like, Poe comes with a blaster and Poe comes with a cup. So maybe Bo is having cheers. I don't think Poe would be drinking hot cocoa, or if he would, he'd be having it, something in it. But let's take a look at this great figure. So this is what Lego Star Wars Advent Calendars are all about. They're all about having an exclusive print. And there were a couple of years where Lego got cheap on us, and they weren't giving us exclusive prints anymore. But this is the year that they're back, and this is great. Now, when I say they got cheap, they did give us a couple of exclusive figures. So I'm not complaining about that. Last year's advent calendar gave us an exclusive Luke Skywalker, uh, which is just fabulous. It was in his outfit from The Last Jedi. So I was really excited to receive that. And then the year before that, we received uh, the general from, uh, uh, from Blue Squadron, from uh, the, uh, my favorite uh, Disney Star Wars movie, uh, which would be Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So I, I can't complain about receiving those. Uh, and then in the year before that, we received a prior uh, uh, officer from um, the Resistance. So those are cool. But it's really cool to get these uh, Christmas uh, figures as well. All right, let's see what else we have. Uh, should we look at... Okay, let's take a look at this here. Now this is fun. This is a uh, traditional Stormtrooper from the original trilogy. Good companion to have with Luke. 
And this is a great figure. It has the new helmet. This is a dual molded helmet here. And it first debuted a year or so ago. Uh, it actually came out in a junior set first. And then there was a, um, a Sand Trooper variant of this with the Dewback. And then there was the Death Star Escape. So I think those were all the sets that featured the figure. One of the things that's really interesting here, let me put my glasses on. Yes, if you notice that there is um, gray on the black here, well, there was actually a, an accident in the production run, or maybe it was on purpose, but there are a number of these that have, don't have the gray on them. And I was really excited that I was able to get a couple of those when the first run had come out. So that just is a variant added to my collection. But this is a great minifigure. And I actually, I subscribe to the uh, Lego Star Wars magazine, and uh, it's a, it comes out by Unique Magazines. What's really cool is that they just gave a poly bag of this too. So if I wanted to do some army building with the new helmeted stormtroopers, because they do stand a little bit taller, uh, then this is just another great way to do it. So I, I probably will open this up to add to my collection, but just not yet. Let's see what else we have. Let's take a look at some of the builds that we have since we haven't looked at this right here. Now, I saw that uh, on uh, Ryan from uh, Mandar Productions, he actually, his was damaged. And this is actually Anakin's uh, pod racer. And his, he had a damage, a couple of damaged parts in his, but I see that mine is all set, so that's really cool. I will make a, now with the Tatooine, or the Moss Eisley uh, Master Builder set coming out, which I'm really excited about that, because I, I, I didn't like, I didn't like the, um, the, the Master Builders, or actually they called it a UCS then, uh, Battle of Hoth set, or Assault on Hoth, right? Uh, but in retrospect, I wish I had purchased that, because you could take that Hoth set, because it was modular, and you could take all your other Hoth sets, and you could put them together and create a, a larger scene. So, I don't know, I guess I wasn't thinking at the time, so I didn't buy it. I got the minifigures from it. Got the Tauntaun and the Wampa, uh, my first ones of those, but... Uh, so anyway, not making that same mistake, I'm excited to get the Masters Builders Moss Eisley Cantina this year, and then combine that with my other Cantina sets, with Obi-Wan's Hut, some other Tatooine-related sets like Jabba's Palace and things, and create a really big mock. So then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take all of the Tatooine-related uh, builds that came with the Advent Calendars and the Micro Fighters and, and all of those, and mash them all together and just have a really cool Tatooine display piece. But th anyway, this is fun. Uh, I, I like it. I really like the, um, his pod racing set that came out last year as part of the 20th anniversary. I didn't get a chance to build that, but I certainly will to put it as part of my Tatooine Moth in my new home in the U.S. Because there's a lot more, a lot more space in my home in the U.S. than my one here in Singapore. And people have asked me, by the way, how are you going to divide up your collection? And what I've decided to do is that all of my Rebel sets that are here in the U.S. I'm sorry, all of my Rebel sets that are here in Singapore they are going to the U.S., so they're going to be flying with me back to the U.S., and then all of my Imperial sets are going to stay here in Singapore. And I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with the gray area stuff, like the bounty hunters. Speaking of which, I did a video series where I did, my, I did the light side, I did the dark side, and then I did the gray side. But I think all of the gray side are also going to go to the U.S., and it'll just be the Empire that'll stay here uh, in Singapore. All the rest will be over there, just in case you were wondering, which you probably weren't. Uh, this white build right here, I'm not exactly sure. I, I should pull out the reference photo for this. If I had to guess... Hmm. Oh, this is the shield generator. That's right, because I see the four gray pieces. This is the shield generator from Hoth. And I'll actually be taking this shield generator from Hoth and I will be integrating it with the, the Hoth game. So I actually, I did a video, so if you look at my LEGO uh, playlist here, I did a video because I don't think I have any room left in the cards. If I do, it'll be right up here. If not, you can take a look in the playlist. But the LEGO came out with a game, uh, a turn-based game, uh, that uh, focused on the Battle of Hoth. And you should check that out. I did a video on it uh, for May the 4th of this past year. But I've been integrating all of the Hoth-related builds into that, just because I think that's pretty fun. And so I'll be doing that with this for sure. So check that out. Oh, yes. I'll have to get out the instructions to before I build this one on camera. So you'll have to give me a second. Uh, I'll do that in a minute. But this is a pit droid. So I'm really excited about that. That's a good companion to, um, to the... Can you hear that kid screaming out at the pool? I don't know if, if my mic is picking up or not, but uh, there's some, some action going on outside uh, my 
my patio uh, a door over there. Anyway, this is a pit droid. Goes well with Anakin's uh, uh, pod racer there. And I'll be building this one right towards the end of the video. Here's another fun Christmas build. I'll build this one off camera too and then share with you. But this is of the Tauntaun. It's a Rudolph Tauntaun, so it has a red nose. I'll show that with you a little bit later. This is an A-Wing. And actually the A-Wing is on the, um, on the other flap of the box right here, I remember seeing. And this A-Wing is far nicer than the one that we received. I have some of my sets right over here. This A-Wing is a lot nicer than the A-Wing that's right here. I guess maybe they were trying to keep it in scale because you can see just from this one wing alone, this would be a little bit larger. But this A-Wing should have gone here. And you know what? When I build this A-Wing, it's probably going to go right here. But man, I just, I love, I, I love the, some of the fun things that LEGO's been coming out with lately. I really wish though that when they came out with these uh, premium with purchase sets, this was for May the 4th uh, for the uh, UCS A-Wing. I wish though that it had come with a minifigure. Like maybe an exclusive TIE Fighter pilot or something, since we received an A-Wing pilot in the um, in the UCS set. But I really I really like getting minifigures, and they've done this for Harry Potter. So when they had actually come out with uh, uh, what's the scene anyway, it's the super new set that came out. Anyway, they came out with a premium purchase one, and it came with a figure. So I don't know why they can't do that for Star Wars also. I'm a minifigure fan. What do you want? All right. Anyway, this is an A-Wing. I will not be building this one today, but it's fun. This is actually a prequel ship right here. Was there anything special? No, no special parts on this one. This is a uh, Republic uh, frigate, or this was like the concert vehicle that actually Obi-Wan and Anakin uh, took when they met with the Trade Federation. They got destroyed in the hangar of the, the droid control ship, which speaking of droid control ship, we do receive one in this particular build. I'm trying to see this one is not it. Hmm. I am at... Ah, here is a, a pork, right? Yeah. Here is another pork. This one is not Christmas colored, but he technically is exclusive because his breast is going to be, his fe breast feathers are going to be a different color than they were in the years past. But anyway, we'll build the pork in a minute. I'm trying to figure out what some of these, ah, this is the Razor Crest right here. And the Razor Crest is quite fun. I think it's great that LEGO has incorporated a bunch of different properties in, in this particular build here. Oh yes, that's right. That, this is actually Darth Vader's castle. I was trying to figure out what this one was. This is Darth Vader's castle. And the TIE Fighter that comes with it, I think that was a cute little nod that they did that. But it, it looks more like a TIE Bomber, so I'm a bit surprised by that. But all right, anyway, there's Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. This is the Millennium Falcon. If you're wondering how I can tell, I'm just basing on the, the number of pieces that are there. But this is definitely the Millennium Falcon. Probably the best uh, micro brick built Falcon that we've received. Though actually, I'm quite impressed by, just reaching down into my cabinet here, I'm quite impressed by some of the other sets that have come out in the past. So for example, this was an exclusive set that you could get at Target. And so you see the little base plate here that says Star Wars on it. But this Falcon right here, this one was a Target exclusive here, in the, well, in the U.S. anyway. Now, the only thing I did is I added uh, the, um, the guns to the top, but that was there. This was a Cloud City with um, twin pocket cloud cars from a past advent calendar. And then, because I really love the Kessel Run Falcon so much, I decided to use this uh, type of build, if you will, and I built my own. So there's my own custom version of the, uh, of the Kessel Run Falcon. And I just uh, just substituted in, in the wedge there. I added where the escape pod is there. And so anyway, I keep that, keep all my stuff, if you've not watched my videos before, in plastic cases, or as much as I can anyway, to protect them. Got a lot of stuff under, uh, under that cabinet there. In fact, that's where I keep all my minifigures. I haven't decided what to do with my minifigures. Do I keep them in Singapore? Or do I bring them back to the US? Or do I start a second collection? Yeah, okay. All right, um, let's see. I'm not sure what this particular one is. I'm gonna have to look at the box. Oh no, this is the X-Wing. How could I, how did I forget? Of course, from the coloring. This is an X-Wing. This is probably one of the best small built X-Wings we've received, but I'm thinking back to all of the other advent calendars. I think we've, this may be the third or now the fourth X-Wing. It's fun if you're building a collection of them. And so 
I mean, I do. It's, it's, it's fine. But, I don't know. It'd be nice for some variety. And, yes, that's right. This, speaking of variety, right? So, this is actually, sorry, this is actually Darth Vader's, that's right. This is actually Darth Vader's castle right here because here's the, the lava. And this is actually a TIE Interceptor. And, uh, or the Sith, it's the Dorito TIE Fighter, rather. So this is the Dorito TIE from the Rise of Skywalker. This is Darth Vader's castle. So some cool builds there. This is probably my favorite of all of the builds. And what is this? This is the droid control ship. This is the first time we've ever had a droid control ship from the Phantom Menace. They're also seen in Attack of the Clones and in the Clone Wars. But look at this piece here. I don't think we've ever seen this before. This is the same type of head that uh, we see on the port, and it's in this uh, gunmetal gray, which is really neat. This is the droid control ship, and really excited to have that. I, I, I like the Trade Federation stuff a lot. What do we have here? We have a snow speeder. And as I mentioned to you in that Battle of Hoth game, I've, in, I've enlarged the game, or the scope of the game, by adding in these different pieces. So I'm really happy that there's another snow speeder and the shield generator so I can expand the, the gameplay of that. And then eventually uh, when I'm back in the US, I am going to make that game even larger. I'll be able to display it and I'll, I'll include all of these and I'll do another video in one year. This looks to be, uh, this is probably Luke's home and that is a good companion to, um, to uh, the Luke Skywalker figure that's here. And tying in again, this will go to my Moss Eisley mock that I'll be putting together along with the Cantina later on this year as well. Now, I've been saving these. I've been cherry picking what's here. This is a gonk droid, and this is a Santa gonk. And I think that's kind of fun because last year they gave us this Christmas gonk droid. So last year they gave us this Christmas gonk, which is really, really fun. And this year they're giving us a Frosty the Snowman version of that, which is really cool. I wish, though, that there was some printed part. And again, I don't... Uh, so we'll build this one, and I'll show that with you, because this will... The figures that I'm, I'm setting aside right here are the ones that are going to find their way into one of my ornaments. Uh, but I really like print, and here's why. And so as, as fun as that is, how cool is it that in years past they gave us... And here is, uh, for example, the Christmas... Version. This could be the Life Day uh, Chewbacca, but no, I mean, how cool is that? That they gave us this white Chewbacca, with, and then they gave us the exclusive uh, bandolier here that's printed, right? That's a lot of fun. And then here's one of my favorites from the years past. And here, speaking, so here we have a brick built gonk uh, for this 2020, but this year, uh, that year rather, this was I think the second advent calendar, so it was 2012, they gave us a Frosty the Snowman R2. It's printed, and I mean, that's just beautiful, it's wonderful. So. I don't know. Why, why can't we get more things like that, Lego? I appreciate what we do have, but I don't know. I just, I just like some more. So as I'm complaining about that, though, the final one, the final figure that I've been holding out on you guys, because this is empty now, and I believe this would be the one that you'll be opening on Christmas Day, but not to give away any spoilers, is the Santa Darth Vader. Wow, this is cool. So here are all of the sets so far. Lots of minifigures, which is great. Lots of builds. So we have Luke Skywalker. We have Stormtrooper. We have a battle droid. Rey. And the Sith Trooper. Okay, so, and the rest of these are builds. And they're fun builds. Some of the better builds that we've had in years. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight minifigures. And then if we're talking about doing brick builds of things, then we also have the, the gonk droid, we also have the tauntaun, and they also have the pit droid. So why don't we focus in on those, and I'm going to build these off camera, and then, so I'll be, I'm off camera, I'm going to build the, uh, the pit droid, the tauntaun, the gonk droid, the porg, and Darth Vader, and then highlight them for you in just a minute. All right, I'm back, 
and I gotta say it was a lot of fun to build these. It was a bit tricky because again, I hadn't opened this up, so I wasn't able to see the instructions of them. I did cheat though. I went over to uh, lego.com. The instructions are not yet available. However, you're able to take a look at the figures, right? And the different builds that are there. And so by doing that, I was just able to figure out what to build. We'll put Vader back up here because that was the most fun. And so here they are. So I've, I've built the exclusive uh, figures uh, for this, both brick built as well as uh, mini figures. And as I mentioned before, this comes with Rey. It comes with a, uh, a battle droid, an original uh, trilogy stormtrooper, a first order Sith trooper, and a uh, New Hope Luke Skywalker. And then of course, all of the other builds that I shared with you a bit earlier. Uh, but as a minifigure collector, most of all, uh, this is what I was most excited with. So why don't we take a look at the Gonk Droid. I think he's a lot of fun. And so he's supposed to be Frosty the Snowman here. And he's just super cool. I really, I really like him. And he came with a lot of extra pieces. So why don't I just show you here uh, the extra pieces that he came with. And that's fun. I enjoy getting uh, things like the extra branch, etc. So that's really cool. The next up that I want to share with you is the pit droid. And the pit droid came with a lot of extra pieces too that I'll just share with you right here. I think it's really great when you get extra parts. So the pit droid is great. He should have actually come with last year's 20th anniversary uh, Anakin's pod racer. It, I mean, so few parts. And it would have been really good that if he had come with that, then he also would have come here, then you would have had two. They could have done a variation of colors, perhaps. And then, but I mean, it's not like you couldn't build this yourself, but it would have been nice uh, if you had had that option of now by buying that set and then having this and then having two. It's the whole reason why they do things like putting in the Sith Trooper, the Storm Trooper, or the, um, the Battle Droid, right? For army building. And I, this is probably one of the cheapest ways to actually get uh, Rise of Skywalker Ray, which is, which is nice, but if you are buying and collecting the sets, then it's not. I'm, if I, I don't have insights into this, but I really wonder who buys the calendars. Are the calendars sort of a gateway drug to get somebody to then, you know, so you buy one of these? If maybe you don't have any Lego Star Wars, so you buy one. A dog is coming to get me. I don't know if it's the, the microphone's picking it up or not. Uh, there's one outside the window. Uh, and uh, so, I don't know, are these the gateway drugs? So you haven't owned any Star Wars sets yet, so you buy this and then maybe you start to collect up. Maybe that's it. Uh, I already showed you the Dio, but why don't, as I bring Dio over built, why don't I bring over the exclusive pork? And he's just different because of the color of his breastplate. So I think we've had a light gray one, a dark gray one, a Christmas, uh, a red one last year, and then I think this is a white one. So that, I believe, makes that to be an exclusive there. Just to make sure that I'm correct as I'm talking. Let's see, the one that I have, that I pulled it out. No, his breastplate was white. Oh, his wings, it's his wings that were red. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. And here is a Tauntaun, which is really fun. I look forward to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Tauntaun. I look forward to adding this into the, um, uh, into one of these uh, ornaments over here. I think that'll be pretty cool. Maybe put a Hoth Luke in there with him. I already showed you uh, Poe. Oh, I'm trying to knock Vader over here. I already showed you Poe with his ugly Christmas sweater. And he's joined by Darth Vader with an equally, though this is really cool because it has the Death Star on it. But you see, there is Poe and Darth Vader's sweater. It has some printing on the back as well. Actually, I took uh, some pictures of this here, so why don't I just show you those uh, photos that are right there now. You can take a look at them and you can see the, uh, the prints that were there. This is a fun advent calendar. I think my overall review, now again, I haven't built these yet. I will, uh, I just didn't, I, uh, didn't want to do it just yet. But I'm really excited to get the uh, Tatooine, Luke's home, and uh, the uh, twin pod, uh, sorry, the twin pod cloud car, the pod racer to add to a, a mock uh, for uh, the, uh, we're going along with all the Tatooine things for the Mos Eisley Cantina. I like the Darth Vader's castle with the TIE fighter. I like having the Dorito uh, Sith TIE, the X-Wing. I'm really excited, as I mentioned to you, adding the shield generator and the uh, snow speeder. So this was, a, this was a fun build. And you probably want me to compare, I think it's just, fun to do that. The way you just open up these here and they just go on a uh, former radar dish or a piece there. 
but just so that you can compare side by side a, with the original Christmas Darth Vader, which is really, he's got some great print on here. And that's just really nice. Uh, so, I mean, this, is, this was a lot more effort on Lego's part, for sure, uh, to do that. Which do you like better? This one has the original helmet piece, this is the newer helmet piece, but which of the two of these do you prefer? I'm just curious, let me know. So what I think I'll do is I will add these uh, exclusive minis into um, the ornaments here, and then I will show you those to close out uh, this video. But since you're here, and as a special Christmas bonus, I am not only going to share with you the 2020 uh, minifigures and their ornaments, but I'm going to share with you all of the Christmas exclusive figures that have come with Advent calendars going back to 2011, as well as the 2019 Xmas Wing figures that can be found over there. So why don't I do that? I'm going to take you on a tour of these inside of the Christmas ornament, as well as every single one going back to 2011. Let's check that out. Here is the 2019 Lego Employee Christmas gift. It contained two exclusive minifigures. One of them is actually a hodgepodge, which is Yoda, so you could actually uh, brick this out. However, the Resistance Xmas Wing pilot is exclusive, so the print is exclusive on both the front and the back. However, the 2011 first advent calendar contained an exclusive Santa Yoda. In 2012, we received a Frosty the Snowman R2-D2. I really love the print on this figure. And as a callback to a Ralph McQuarrie Christmas card, we have a Rudolph R2-D2 and C-3PO as Santa Claus. So I think it's really cool that Lego included those one year. The Christmas or Life Day Chewbacca is quite fun with his Christmas bandolier. And last year we received a Christmas Porg with Chewie firing him up and eating one of his cousins. We have a Santa BB-8, which is a bit lazy, but not to be outdone, this year we have a Santa Dio. They do look cute together, but I really would have preferred a Christmas print on each of these. In 2012, I believe it was, we have a Christmas Darth Maul, quite fun. And this year, of course, we have Poe with BB-8 on his ugly Christmas sweater. I really like this one, it's fun. One of my all-time favorites is Django Fett as Santa Claus, and stay tuned to the end of this video for some more Mandos. Here is the first Darth Vader we received as Santa Claus. The printing on here is really nice. I enjoy this. But I love Death Stars, so can't complain too much about this year's Darth Vader with Death Star Christmas sweater. Here is a First Order Snow Trooper with a snow blower. I thought this one was a lot of fun. This was from two years ago. And here is a Clone Trooper with a Santa hat, and behind him is a build from the advent calendar of a fireplace. And here is a snowman with a uh, snowball gun on another type of a speeder. Along with another snowman with uh, what should have been a uh, resistance helmet, but I have that on the exclusive General Merrick figure. This is perhaps my all-time favorite. It is the Christmas tree astromech. This year's whimsical frosty gonk droid is fun, but it would have been so much better if we had had an exclusive print as opposed to it just being brick built. As was last year's Christmas present gonk droid. Still a lot of fun, but it's just brick built, not printed. And here is another brick build along with the gonk droid, and this is the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Tauntaun. I enjoy this uh, moisture evaporator sort of in Christmas tree fashion. And we also received a Christmas tree in the very first 2011 Advent calendar. Now, where do I get these ornaments from? Well, from Lego. Just empty them out and add your minifigure. As a special bonus for those of you that love all things Mandalorian, we have the Razor Crest. 
And I just thought I'd include this at the end and give you a special treat and show off my Mandalorian collection. Yes, I know Boba Fett and Jango Fett are not official Mandalorians, but they're wearing Mandalorian armor. Here is every single Mando related figure that Lego has put out. And I've included two other uh, builds here from uh, Advent Calendars past. So we have Jango Fett Slave 1, as well as Boba Fett Slave 1, with of course the Razor Crest. And there is the Jango Fett in Christmas armor as well. Just thought I'd include this at the end of the video as a special treat for those of you. And I can't wait for the October 30th premiere of The Mandalorian Season 2. While this may not be the very best advent calendar to date, it is a lot of fun. I think it contains a lot of good minifigures, a few exclusive prints, and some of the better builds that we've received in advent calendars past. So I would highly recommend this. And if you can get your hands on the Employee Gift Xmas Wing, I would highly recommend that as well. Also, just a little tidbit, the code for the Rise of Skywalker game is Life Day. All right, I hope you enjoyed my overview of all of the LEGO Star Wars uh, Advent Calendars past inside of the ornaments, as well as taking a look at the 2020 LEGO Star Wars Advent Calendar. Again, I think this is one of the better ones, uh, certainly one of the better ones of the past uh, four years or so now. Uh, the original calendars, still going back to 2011, 2012, 2013, those are some of the, those are the best. I'd really like to see LEGO return to that. But until they do, I'm really excited. This is progress going forward. I like the exclusive prints. I like the Christmas build. And I look forward to more things that LEGO would do. And if anybody from LEGO is watching this video, I just want to share with, share with you one more time. This is one of the best sets you've ever put out. I really love this whole concept. Uh, I, I love the, uh, the, the uh, sort of the uh, sleigh or repair, uh, repair or transport vehicle. I love Yoda's hut covered in snow with uh, the um, sort of the, it looks like an antenna when the X-Wing's not on there, but uh, it doubles as a stand. I would love to see you do something like this with a Dagobah set in, in the future. I think there's just a lot of opportunities that LEGO could do with that. So please give us a set like that, uh, not just an exclusive for employees, but for everyone else as well. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and I know it's only September at the time I'm filming this. Maybe you'll be watching this in December, but I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving 2020 and a Merry Christmas in uh, 2020 and a Happy New Year for 2021. I'm really hoping and praying that 2021 will be a much better year for all of us than 2020 was. All right, God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. Like our theme by the rock band Action? You can check them out here or visit the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember, there's always fresh content simmering on our storytelling stovetop. So whatever happens in this kitchen shouldn't stay in this marketing kitchen. I'm Ron Vining, your host, reminding you to invite your family and friends to the next episode of Marketing Kitchen TV.